Every angler has a favorite time to chase fish with a fly. Whether it be during the blossoming spring, the green of summer, the colors of autumn, or during the cleansing white of winter. It merely offers a backdrop to a pursuit that has attached itself to the soul of a fly fisherman. Rod, reel, fly, and fish. Under that log, behind that rock, or deep in the dark blue could live a fish of a lifetime. Oh, he got it! He it. It's in that helpless hope that an angler will march from year to year in a lifetime, hoping the next cast connects dreams and a fish of legend. Welcome to Seasons on the Fly. Welcome to Seasons on the Fly. I'm Greg Heister. It's the middle of the winter, the month of January, and we're in the state of Louisiana. It may be best known for the Saints, Drew Brees, and Mardi Gras, but not here. The bull redfish scores all of the headlines. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Seasons on the Fly, and welcome to the marshes and the bayou of the great state of Louisiana. Long, 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 long. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Stop. Bump, bump. Hey, Jeff, strip. Ugh. He hit it. Nice. Good fish. Shallow water doesn't offer much safety to a fish. It's why they love the deep. Not the case for the bull red. They are the apex predator in this jungle. Big, bad, a bully. Good job, Todd. I never saw the fish till he ate it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Way to hustle. It is uh, a very unique fishery in, in the fact that this is the only area in the country that you can find large redfish uh, in the shallow marshes. Uh, generally these fish are in the deeper channels and things of that nature, but being that the biodiversity in this area and the amount of you know, bait and bait fish and shrimp and crabs uh, are so plentiful that these fish are just packing on the pounds after their um, spawning. This is the honest to God truth. I came here thinking that we were gonna catch a bunch of, you know, like I've caught in the past, redfish. You know, nice, beautiful, you know, three, four pounds, maybe eight, nine pound redfish. And that first fish fly goes in, just like a redfish does, turns on, comes over and grabs it. You stick them, you pull them up out of the water. And it was like an 18 pound redfish, biggest redfish I'd ever caught in my life. And one of the first things Todd says to me is that, uh, that's a little one, right? So really, you don't even need to watch any more of the show after that because you just know what kind of show this is gonna be and the caliber of fish that we're gonna show you. You know, take people out to exotic places and show them and guide them to be successful. That was my main priority. Captain Todd Monson spends parts of his year in the marsh. Bump, bump. Got him. Nice. Good coaching, Todd. Louisiana's wilderness, an area so alive and full of critters, sportsmen from every angle enjoy this outdoor resource. Redfish, in my opinion, um, if they jumped, they'd be the best game fish in North America, without a doubt. They're an aggressive fish, obviously very good table fare for a lot of people. They get big and they love to eat the fly. But what more can you ask for? These fish have come to the shallows to feed. Oh, that's a beauty! Shrimp and crabs and anything that moves are in danger of being preyed upon by these fish. This is a day I don't think that I'll ever forget just because of where we're at. We're in the middle of the winter. We're in the middle of a global pandemic, and yet we could come to a place and go home with memories, I think, of some of the greatest fish that you'll ever find anywhere. The marsh, or Louisiana's bayou, makes up 40 to 45% of the wetlands in the lower 48 states of America. It's not a swamp, it's a marsh. There is no woody vegetation here, and it seems endless. When I spent a lot of time in Alaska, you've seen the shows from the Amazon. There are a few environments, I think, at least in North America and the United States that are more alive uh, than this marsh country and bayou country of Louisiana. There's just so many birds and, and species of birds. Every time you turn around, there's a rosette spoonbill going over, or you know the blue herons, or 
the cormorants or the white pelicans. I mean, these birds are just everywhere. It's so alive and you just kind of get the feeling that you're out in the middle of one of our great natures in this country when you're here. Uh, you have a good day. When Seasons on the Fly continues, the bulls get bigger. The swamp donkey gets a bad rap. Oh God. And can it really be this easy? God, that one was too easy. Hi, I'm Greg Heister. To find out the truth about chronic Lyme disease, go to seasonsonthefly.com. Seasons on the Fly is brought to you by C.F. Berkheimer, handcrafted rods, one of a kind, one at a time. And by Kane Lana, no angler likes to get cold even when it's wet, and you won't in Kane Lana wool. And by the Restigouche River Lodge, come fish the land of the giants. And brought to you by Stealthcraft Boats, drift into the 21st century. Don't wait to watch Seasons on the Fly on television. Find our YouTube channel or watch us on Vimeo. And you can now download the Seasons on the Fly app and watch us on Apple TV and Roku. It's Seasons on the Fly on your schedule. Hi, I'm Greg Heister. Don't let the Seasons on the Fly experience end when the show does. Go to SeasonsOnTheFly.com to watch all kinds of video, including fly tying demonstrations, full episodes, and you can support the show by buying a hat or a DVD. Your support is greatly appreciated. And you can follow Seasons on the Fly on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Your support is greatly appreciated, and I hope to see you on the water sometime. Seasons on the Fly is brought to you by Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. And by Honda, power when and where you need it. It's the middle of the winter, and where I live, finding a place to fish can be pretty difficult. You know, our steelhead runs out west aren't what they used to be. So when I got a hold of Todd and he said, look, Louisiana, I'm like, Louisiana. It was an opportunity to come down here and just to get away from COVID for a little bit, catch some fish. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, God, I don't know. God, that one was too easy. <laughs> the Louisiana marsh is in essence the liver of millions of square miles. The water starts north and dumps into the Gulf of Mexico here. The Louisiana Bayou is a filtering ecosystem like few others, rich and diverse. It's unbelievable, you know, some of the shoreline that you fish now will be completely different in the next year. There's always little channels popping up or mud flats and banks and stuff that completely are changed by currents and whatnot. So it's, it's always something new and you're constantly learning. The marsh definitely is, holds its own beauty without a doubt. The reason why these fish are here is to pack on the pounds after uh, spawning season, which is in October and September. They're in here eating all the crabs and shrimp and different little bait fish that are all over this area. You know, everybody posts the photos, the hero shots of all these big heads and these fish that, you know, are probably out of the frame. And you're like, okay, they're probably out in 400 feet of water somewhere. They've dropped something down, you know, 300 feet. I had no idea that we were going to catch fish in the marsh. And it was all visual. Bump, 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 bump. He's all over here. Bump, bump. Oh, got him. Got him. Nice. Nice. Good job. This area can produce some very large redfish. In a lot of places, it's long cast. Here, a lot of it's a short game, you know. If you can cast 30 feet and put it where it needs to go, you know, you can be successful here and catch, you know, large redfish Man, for sure. That's a beautiful fish. The marsh is endless, huge country. The fish and their size is shocking. Three feet of water and 30 pound fish. You know, I joke with clients and tell them that there is slot size reds around, but generally speaking, we don't uh, really target them. Definitely the larger redfish are what I'm after. Finding those fish is, is key. This place is one of the only places in the country you can target these fish day to day and be successful. Indeed, that's true. However, Perfect. There are other giants <laughs> lurking in there as well. Big drum. Big drum. The swamp donkey. Hmm. They get a bad rap. They grow huge. 
Not the best fighters, but some are better than others. They are slimy, they got a little bit of stink to them. Sometimes they don't pull as hard as the reds, but how can you not be happy catching a fish on a fly? Sometimes they can be even more tricky to get to eat uh, than the reds. You know, uh, it takes real slow, get it, you gotta get the fly right in front of them. They're, they're very lazy eaters. It's still, it's a big fish and I love getting pictures with them. And that brings us to the Cajun or the Marsh Slam. The redfish, the black drum, and the sheep's head. He come, he's trying to eat it. He Get him. did eat it. <laughs> we got a sheep's head. These things have some wild teeth, man. A cute little devil with teeth that could be used for wire snippers. So the sheep's head is probably one of the more underrated fish. They're awesome table fare, and they are just a unique fish, you know, that you can catch out here and just add to your day. They can be very hard to catch on fly some days, and some days they're very willing to eat the fly. It takes a good presentation to get them to eat. I really do enjoy uh, targeting them. When Seasons on the Fly continues, it's total teamwork. More with the swamp donkey, and you can't go to Louisiana without eating an oyster. Seasons on the Fly is brought to you by the new SOF UV adhesives, industrial grade, tack free, and a complete line of colors, sparkle, and you won't beat the price. Change the way you tie flies. And by CF Berkheimer, handcrafted rods, one of a kind, and one at a time. And by Tarpon Key Lodge in Belize, catch a grand slam before breakfast. Hi, I'm Greg Heister, a reminder, Please support our sponsors. Without them, this show is impossible. You can do that by going to SeasonsOnTheFly.com, clicking on their logo, and let them know that you support them and that you're part of the team. Thanks for watching Seasons on the Fly. Seasons on the Fly is brought to you by Kane Lana. No angler likes to get cold even when it's wet, and you won't in Kane Lana wool. And by Sea Run Cases, where every case tells a story and our air travel approved. And by SeasonsOnTheFly.com. Don't let the experience end when the show does. And by the brand new Seasons on the Fly Lodge, the SOF experience continues on Alaska's Quijack River. And brought to you by Stealthcraft Boats. Drift into the 21st century. The water in the marsh is dirty, mud bottom, and it takes a skilled eye to spot fish. The guide is high on a platform. The angle of vision to the water is key. It's target casting. And you know, there's the teamwork. You've got a guy up on the on the tower, you know, he's dialed in on the fish, he knows what direction they're going, you know, on the clock, where they're at, how far away they are, how fast they're moving. And so you gotta be able to drop the fly in a place, and then he's gonna tell you to you know, strip fast, long strip, slow strip, small strip, bump, 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 bump. bump. Get him. Got him. Oh, big fish. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and you see the footage. It's like he was an alligator in the water, just kind of sauntering his that, way. saw that gill flare I was you telling you did. about. Yep. You get into a, you know, a great teamwork situation when the guide and the angler are dialed in together. Oh my God, Todd. Pretty cool. Man, when it's a 20 pound fish, or a 25 pound fish, or a 28 pound fish, it's spectacular. God, was that spectacular? <laughs> My directions a lot of times are probably not the same things a lot of guys use as far as, you know, uh, terminology or whatever, but I would say that you gotta just stop the fly when the fly needs to be stopped. Little movement triggers the bite. Uh, a lot of times the fly can just be sitting still on the bottom and kind of almost waiting for the fish to come to the fly. Whoa! Little subtle movements are the one are key to triggering them to, uh, to eat. What a fish. You know, when they move, the mud kind of billows up and it kind of covers the fish up. And so, again, the angle of being higher and looking down becomes even more crucial. And so there were many fish uh, with Todd that I may have made the cast, but I credit him with the hookup. What do you think about that? That was huge! That bite was awesome. That is what it's all about. 
fish could be 30 feet away and I'm still not seeing it. And then all of a sudden you feel it. And he's the one that's kind of coached me into the speed of the fly, the direction of the fly, and where it is in relationship with the fish. And so I get the hero shot, I get to fight the fish, a lot of fun, but it was really a team thing. It would take an angler years to learn the twists and the turns of this marsh. It's complicated and ever changing. A guide who spends weeks and weeks here can track the movement of the fish. I tell people a lot, it's a lot of trial and error and uh, more error than trial, I guess. And, uh, you know, I just came out here and just started thinking about what habitat they would be looking for and where the food might be. It's been a long road, you know, you learn new things all the time and the marsh is always changing and that's probably one of the biggest things for this area is I would love to see people more educated and understanding on what's going on out here. These fish seem to be attracted to the boat. So if they're out there milling around for food, they must see something that they can get under and so they start moving. So oftentimes you don't see them until they're literally 12 feet from the boat. Sometimes it's just a little flip and you luck out or sometimes they're gonna follow that fly all the way in and eat it right in front of you. So again, it's very visual because not only do you get to target cast and see fish out there, you get to watch them follow the fly in and, and oftentimes you see them open up their mouth and suck the fly and you see their gills kind of <laughs> suck it in and then they turn and you stick them and, and, and it's a 20 pound fish in two feet of water. It's spectacular. And of course, Louisiana isn't all about fishing. The entire experience can't be enjoyed without the fresh seafood of the bayou. Todd's got some great places and some friends that we go out and, and enjoyed uh, a bite with. And again, Louisiana is about the experience, right? All of this fresh seafood down here and just the friendliest of people. What an experience Louisiana has been. If you like seafood, South Louisiana has got you covered. The shrimp are you know as fresh as it can get oysters and you have crawfish and different species of fish you know the offshore fishing here is just as good as the inshore so you know tunas and wahoos and things of that nature that you can get all fresh in the markets it's pretty awesome i'll definitely get my fill we'll wrap up another episode of seasons on the fly from louisiana when we come back seasons on the fly is brought to you by Dry Fly Distilling, handcrafted spirits made in the Pacific Northwest, and by Wild Alaska Sport Fishing and Cruises. Come find the real Alaska. <laughs> Seasons on the Fly is brought to you by Scientific Anglers, Fish the Truth, and by Sea Run Cases, where every case tells a story and our air travel approved. Well, we're on a flyway here, so we do get a lot of ducks. Generally in this area, they're all divers, but we do have a lot of, just a lot of birds. And it's funny, because you know, you ride around in the marsh every day in the boat, and you know, some guy looks at a white pelican, and I'm just like, ah, oh, it's just another white pelican. But in all actuality, you know, people can ride around here, and you're gonna see some stuff that not everybody gets to see and experience. You know, the amount of marine life that you see, tons of porpoises, they're everywhere. That's another thing the clients are always staring at and wanting to see and take photos, and I kind of take for granted, you know, it's pretty awesome. Not to mention we have a lot of sea turtles uh, in and out of the marsh and sharks and things like that, so it's definitely very diverse. The word bayou is thought to come from a Choctaw Indian word that means small stream. There is nothing small about the bayou in Louisiana. Its diversity is rich, its acreage is enormous, and its fish are unforgettable. The red drum has a beauty that is unique to this environment. Much like the marsh, it's subtle, more bronze than red, and more worthy than a swamp. A marsh more alive than most areas of the world, and during a global pandemic, the ultimate spot to isolate. Nice, good fish. I'm Greg Heister, and I'll see you next time 
on Seasons on the Fly. Good fish. God, that was a sweet take. Redfish in the industry are, are a big deal, and they're becoming even more popular, and I think more people want to catch them. They're spectacular, but <laughs> once you catch a 25-pound redfish on a fly, I, I think it's, it's going to be very difficult to go home and dream about a 5-pounder or an 8-pounder. So you got to find the magic in all of this. Oh my God, Todd. Pretty cool. What a fish. If you want to catch a redfish in your life, he's the guy to call. He's the guy, the absolute guy to call.